Have you ever finished a drawing and you like it, but at the same time you feel like there's something missing? I know I have. In fact, the drawing in this video is one of them. So here are seven tips, or art finishers as I like to call them, that help make your art pop. The first tip is adjusting the colors and using a gradient map. One of the first things I like to do whenever I finish an illustration is adjust the colors or add a gradient map. Let's take this drawing here for example. It looks pretty good as is, but once I bump up the saturation a bit, it looks like a whole different drawing. You can play around with the hues and brightness as well, but typically I only change the saturation. I looped gradient mapping in with color adjustment because though it's a little bit different, it's rather similar. Instead of adjusting the hues, saturation, and brightness of your drawing, it adjusts the range of colors in it. For example, it can make every red, green, and every blue, orange, and vice versa. Oh, and bonus tip, you can use the black and white gradient map to check the values of your illustration. In fact, this drawing was done entirely in grayscale and I simply added a gradient map over afterwards. It's a really good exercise that I highly recommend you try sometime. Try adding some texture. Personally, I like to add noise to my drawings to give it a more polished and put together look. Simply make an overlay layer and click this little magic wand and go to noise. I usually do 5-10% to below noise, but just play around with the settings and see what you like best. You can also add different textures by using a brush on an overlay layer similar to how you did noise. This is actually the key on how to make your drawings look like it was drawn on a piece of paper rather than a tablet. Add some blurs. Have you ever noticed how in photography and cinematography they use blurs in their art forms? It's absolutely gorgeous when they do, so why shouldn't we incorporate it into ours? Try slightly blurring the foreground or background to give the illusion of depth, and motion blurs can convey movement. Using perspective blurs can emphasize the focal point of your drawing, and make it look as if the drawing's staring at the viewer and not the other way around. If that makes sense. Add some screen tones or some shapes. This is where it starts to get a little funky. But if you ask me, funky is good when it comes to art. Just not the smell of milk. At this point, I like to add some screen tones or some blotches of colors. Try adding some funky shapes here and there. Just go wild, play with it. I think this stage, especially if it works with your style of art, it really gives your art some personality and pops. I really like the loose look of sketches or paintings and I think that it really makes art pop, but if you want me to be honest, all of my drawing is very strict and tight and rigid, so I'm not able to achieve that unless I go in afterwards and add some blotches of color to mimic that. I believe this technique is called overpainting, and a lot of artists use it in the rendering process. I really like the look of, say, Lotus Bubbles art. It's loose, but I'm not able to achieve that since, as I said, my drawing process is more rigid. And adding that looseness afterwards gives it the effect of Mika Picasso's art. And since I'm not nearly at the same skill level as they are, you should really check out their art. By simply watching them draw or looking at their art and breaking it down, you can find some really good techniques to really make your art pop, as I've talked about. So in a way, I think that that's a bonus tip. That being, you should go look at artists that you really enjoy and break down their art and maybe watch a couple of their videos of their process and just take some techniques away from them to put into your own art. Next on the list we have Chromatic Aberration. And if you want me to be honest, I'm not really sure how to say that word. Aberration. According to Google, that's how you say it, but in my mind I always say abbreviation. And it makes me happy, so if I refer to it as abbreviation, just that's what I'm referring to, okay? Personally, I love the look of this, and it's crazy because photographers will actually edit a photo so it doesn't have this. Anyways, you can simply go to that little magic wand place again and click 
chromatic abbreviation. Click displace and then slightly move around your drawing. So for this, you want to draw like how you cook and use your eyeballs to know how much is enough. You need to sign and watermark your art. If you take away one thing from this video, on only one, I want it to be this. You need to watermark and sign your art. It is imperative that you do so. If you're a beginner artist or new to the art scene as a whole, you may not know how bad of a problem art theft really is. Not only will other artists try to steal your artwork that you poured your blood, sweat, and tears into, but companies will steal your art and use them as designs for their merchandise. This problem honestly deserves a video in and of itself, and I am fully prepared to make that video myself because it is a huge problem that needs to be talked about. Anyways, 99% of art thefts will be deterred simply by a watermark, so it's really important that you do so. Not only that, but if someone likes your art but happens to see it outside of your platform, they can simply type in the handle of your watermark and find you, thus growing your audience. Now, a watermark doesn't have to be fancy or anything. For example, my watermark is literally just my handle. But if you want to be fancy and make a really intricate watermark, you can. For example, here is my old one. That being said, I would consider making my watermark a stamp brush so that just with one click your art is already watermarked. And I would also lower the opacity too. For example, mine is usually at 40% opacity. I wouldn't sweat the look or design too much because as my art teacher put it, your watermark should be incorporated as an element of your drawing, but never a focal point. This last tip is also really important, and that is to export it correctly. I believe that this mistake is made by a lot of beginner artists, and I know that I was guilty of this for sure, but make sure that your art is exported correctly. Some file types, for example JPEG, will compress your drawing and make the quality suffer. It's the same concept as to why whenever you upload a picture to Instagram, the quality is always worse than the original picture. As a rule of thumb, I like to export my drawings as either PNGs or TIFFs, and I would stay away from PDFs and JPEGs. And that's all the tips I have for you today. I hope that they helped you, and if you like them, tell me in the comments, and if you didn't like them, also tell me in the comments. Um, but while you're down there, you should also subscribe, so I can see you next week. And with that, that's all I have for you today, but before I go, I want to give a special shout out to my patron, Rattle the Second. I actually uploaded this video a day early on my Patreon, so if you want exclusive content, early access, as well as a shout out in my video, you should check it out. The link's in the description below.